yeah, you, the best way to reverse it is just write to them and let them know that you've, you've since come to an understanding that, or you've since uh, come to a comprehension of the law and that you realise that at the time of admitting that you were that corporate entity or that person, you are not. See, it's like the words, you really, to, to get a hold of it, oh, it costs like 150 bucks for a good legal dictionary. And you start looking at words like person. You and I think the word person means a person. No, it doesn't. The word person means a legal, legal entity. Like, for example, um, the person, Mark McMurtry, is not this. This is, a, this is a soul. It's a flesh and blood human being. The corporate entity, bear, bearing in mind that the government itself is a corporate entity, how does it deal with you and me? How can that, how can that thing that doesn't exist other than a name on a piece of paper and a, a few clicks of a, of, a, of, a, of a keyboard and a click of a mouse, that's all, that's all the Commonwealth is. It's a corporation registered with the Securities Exchange Commission in America. Um, how can the thing that we create, being the Commonwealth, um, have jurisdiction over us? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's ludicrous. But what they do is they create this legal entity called you by your in capital letters, and they then have jurisdiction over that. So when you, when you're, when you get dragged into court, they're not dragging your sorry ass into court. What they're doing is they're dragging your sorry ass into court, but at the same time they're bringing in this legal entity, and the judge says, are you that? And you go, yep, that's me. Yeah. You can't catch But if you stand there and go, no, Your Honour, that's not me. I, I know a bloke in Sydney who, um, to give you an idea of, of, of how you can work this, um, judge asked three times, was this particular person in the court? And on the third occasion he said, and on each occasion he said, look, is Mr Jack Frost here, sort of? He said, he said, Your Honour, my name is Jack, I'm from the family Frost. Can I help you? And in the end, because the judge kept saying, is Mr Jack Frost here? He said, look, Your Honour, can I hand this document up? He handed up his birth certificate. As soon as the judge took it in his hand, he said, Your Honour, you have Mr Jack Frost in your hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr is an admiralty term. Doctor, captain. They're all admiralty terms. They're titles under admiralty law. Mr now, Ben's warrant officer. Exactly right. So if you don't take that title unto yourself, you're not agreeing that you're part of their crew. See, when you get a birthing certificate, you uh, when you're born, the reason you get a birth certificate is because, to, to put it in their admiralty terms, you're born, and when, you, when, you, when the vessel is born, they create a birthing certificate. Because a ship can't trade without a birthing certificate. It must have a home port, a mud drop, all this sort of stuff. Just been That's it. You got it, brother. That's what it's all about. <laughs> what, what do you say who you are? My, well, me. What wording do you... Um, oh, um, I'm, I'm known as Mark McMurtry. I'm not Mr. Mark McMurtry. I'm not Dr. Mark McMurtry. I'm nothing. I'm just, you know, I'm, my name is Mark. I'm from the McMurtry family. You know? Um, but, but what you do when you, when you... See, this is why we've got police officers and not peace officers. Because peace officers under common law maintain the peace. Police officers under admiralty law or statute law maintain the law. Okay? That's why when you walk into a court and you've heard the same, you won't find justice in a court. You'll find law. Right? Because a court, which is a legal entity itself, can't give justice, right? when it's an admiralty court, can't give justice to the common law person. Right? Well, you said that when people get together and form the Commonwealth Government, it's an entity, therefore it can't do something uh, negative to you. But haven't people, I mean, don't people say that you know, people have joined together and decided to have a government to regulate behaviour and keep the peace? Okay. If you read the Constitution, it says that in the preamble it says, whereas we the people of New South Wales, blah, blah, agree to form the indissoluble commonwealth. Okay? We form the indissoluble commonwealth, not the government. Okay? The government is a group of men and women who have been elected by us to represent, not represent, because they don't represent me, they must represent to the, to the parliament what I instruct them to represent. And, and to give you an idea of how ludicrous the whole system is, you got, you got a law in this country, a Commonwealth law, that says if you interfere, interfere with a person's political liberty, it's a, it's a criminal act under Commonwealth law. Yet we've got men and women in the Labor Party and the Liberal Party in the back rooms who are interfering with the way our representatives or representatives are voting in the Parliament. Now, that is a criminal act. Okay, Number one. Number two, we've got parliamentarians who swear allegiance to a Queen under the oath and allegiance in the Constitution. Now, just put my eyes on, sorry. sorry. The, the problem with the Constitution is the Constitution was a, a document created for the, the uh, establishment and, and governance of a colonial collective. 
and if we want to look at the legalities of it, in 1911 Australia became a dominion of the British Empire, which is a change in legal status from single to married. Colony to dominion. It's a change in legal status. Now, from that point in time on, if the constitution was legal, it did not apply because we were no longer a selection, a collection of colonies. And we were no, you know, a colonial law does not apply in a dominion. You know, but then we've got, then we've got to look at the, the, the lawful right of the Commonwealth and the Crown to take possession of this land and extend its sovereignty here, which from day one they never had the lawful right to do so. But, um, so you say the constitution is valid now? The Constitution was never valid. Yeah. <coughs> never, ever. Yeah. Never, ever. I thought it was valid for no. British subjects. Because well, it keeps the problem, on going yeah. they're British subjects. Yeah, they're British subjects, but the issue is the, the Queen Victoria never gave royal assent to the Constitution anyway. Oh, so it was never lawfully created as an act of the British Parliament. What we refer to the Constitution is Section 9 of an act of the British yeah. Parliament called, uh, was it, 63 and 64 Victoria, Chapter 12, an act that constituted the Commonwealth of Australia in 1900 UK. That's the long title of the act. Okay? Um, the first eight sections, or the, what they call the covering clauses, describe how this is to be dealt with. Right? And one of the things that's, 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 that's interesting is that um, it says that every senator, for section, chapter 1, section 42, every senator and every member of the House of Representatives shall, before taking his seat, make and subscribe before the Governor General or some person authorised by him an oath or affirmation of allegiance in the form set forth in the schedule to this constitution. And in no other way, and if you see when, when Rudd took the oath and allegiance, he took an oath and allegiance that was different to the one that John Howard took. Right? And the reason being, they know that if they swear allegiance to the Queen of England, they're cactus. But the problem is, they've sworn, they've sworn an oath and allegiance to the people of Australia, which is not the oath and allegiance that says, I, insert the person's name, mm. do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Victoria, her heirs and successors according to the law, so help me God. And I, so, and I whatever name, do solemnly and sincerely affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Victoria, um, her heirs and successors according to law. Note, the name of the King or Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland for the time being is to be substituted from time to time. So, when they swear allegiance to the King or the Queen of the Parliament of Great Britain, they're swearing allegiance to the, a foreign power. The case of Hill versus Sue, or Sue versus Hill, when Heather Hill was thrown out of the Senate, the reason she was thrown out was because she had dual citizenship, Australian and British. And they said, the High Court said, unanimously, on 23rd of June 1999, they said that because she had sworn allegiance to the Crown of Great Britain, and the Crown of Great Britain is a power foreign to the Commonwealth of Australia, she could not sit in the Senate. Well, if they're swearing their oath and allegiance to the Crown of the British Parliament, they themselves cannot sit in the Senate or the House of Representatives. And if they don't swear, then they can't represent us according to the Absolutely. Constitution. So they're in a catch-22, they're just telling themselves. Exactly. Right. But, but we need to go back, if we start, start back, back in the beginning. Um, when the Settlement Act 1701 was created, it was created because up until then, the kings and queens of England were absolute sovereigns, okay? um, which meant that they were absolute, they ruled. Um, the, the, the legal term is monarchy council, which means they council the parliament, they told the parliament what to do. These days they are what's called a monarchy, a monarch, they were a monarchy in council, they became a monarchy in parliament, which meant the parliament directs them. Queen, from, from, the, time, from the time of uh, 1701, uh, the kings and queens of England, kings and queens of Great Britain, have been nothing more than public servants. They have no right to hereditary title, and they can be sacked on a minute's notice for any breach of law, including the Act of 1771 itself, which says in Section 7 that they are not allowed to take their sovereignty out of the realms of England, Ireland, or Scotland mm. without the consent of the Parliament. Yeah? So, and that's what they did. They took the, 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 the Queen of England. And the kings of England, over a period of time, have taken their, their, their sovereignty outside the realm. So everywhere they've been is illegitimate. But um, the actual words of section 7, it says that, that no person who shall be able to come to the possession of this crown shall, shall go out of the dominions of England, Scotland or Ireland without the consent of the parliament. Now, if you want to have a look at, at, at the fact that they, they claim they brought their sovereignty here legally, section 7 of the Pacific Island Protection Act states that um, I 
Deputy will soon state that nothing herein on any such order in Council shall extend or be construed to extend to invest Her Majesty with any claim or title whatsoever to dominion or sovereignty over the Pacific Islands or Australasian colonies or to der derogate from the rights of the trolls of the people inhabiting such places or islands or of the chiefs and rulers thereof to such sovereignty or dominion. So if, if, the, if the law of the Parliament says they can't bring their sovereignty outside of the law of the Parliament without the consent of the Parliament, and the Parliament says you can't take your sovereignty into the Australasian colonies or Pacific Islands, then obviously they don't have sovereignty here and never have had. The problem with that is oh. that at the same time you send a letter to the EU. Uh, the, you all hear about the, the case of McDonald's, um, these people are putting shit on McDonald's about their food yes. right, yeah. in England, and it went to the High Court, and the High Court said, no, nah. surprisingly enough, the government's court found in favour of the multinational corporation. You'd never think that had happened, but it did. Anyway, <laughs> what happened was, they thought that was the end of it. But the European Union Courts of Justice then turned around and said, give us a look at that. And they took it, and they set the most wonderful precedent, because what they did was they said, nah, we disagree with you guys. Okay, McDonald's? You don't have a right to inhibit freedom of speech. We find in favour of the Right? The precedent was that the European Union took control of British law and established the fact that they had jurisdiction over British Parliament and British law. Now, one thing I'll be working on the side for a little while, you're like this. We're putting together a, 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 um, a uh, pro forma case that as soon as the documents are complete, they can just go out to every Aboriginal nation. And what they do is they make a claim against the monarch and the parliament of Great Britain in their legal, legal, full legal uh, uh, commercial liability for the, for the value of all titled lands that they have stolen and sold to innocent third parties without our consent. Okay? Because they took that land, they've admitted to it millions of times. They did sell it under false title, which is fraud. Um, and, 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 by doing so, they've exposed themselves to a claim for compensation for the value of the goods they stole. Can third parties get compensated as well? Anybody who's been injured can get compensated. Okay? But the bottom line is, for example, have a look at the Bunjalung National Area. If you can think of every block of land that's got a title on it, what that's worth. Because that's what they're going to lose. How much is no, so shouldn't all that title just become null and void? You can't do that. The reason, and, no, no, okay, you, you can do that, but you can't do that. And and, and this is where the moral sort because of... Because if it was all created on. under false... Yeah, but hang on, hang on, place. I'll ask you a question. If we're going to fight as a cohesive unit against the, 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 the unlawful nature and, and performance of the government, yeah. we can't go sticking a knife in the throat of our allies. So all the folk out there that have worked hard and paid for that, even the rednecks, right? Regardless of whether you like a redneck or not, I'm a bit of a redneck myself, you know. Um, but some of what um, <laughs> it, it would be immoral to go and take something off someone. It would be as immoral for us to do it to them as it was for them to do it to us. So the best thing to, to get an argument that can't be lost is to turn around and say, I'll tell you what, how about we all hold hands, right? Yep. And you keep what you've got. And we'll go after the person that stole it off us and give it to you. Okay? Yeah. Um, we petitioned members because one of the barristers I work with, he's, um, uh, he's the ex chairman of the First Division of the Crown Prosecutors Association of the Commonwealth and Brit British Nations. He's the highest Crown Prosecutor in the, the, the Commonwealth of Nations. I've run this case past him, and over about six years or so, he's really, really hammered me on the legal aspects of it. This guy is also licensed to practice in the EU courts. He is also one of the two mediators for the Rule of Law Conference to establish the European Union. So he knows his shit. He's also um, triple Harvard, uh, sorry, triple West Point graduate with honours in military psychology, warfare, and and governance law. Um, he's told me that, that as far as he can see, the case that, that we've created is bulletproof. The Crown can't get around them. Um, because what we're doing is we're using the Crown's own instruments against them. You know, if, and it's, I liken it to, if, if you're going to go into a fight, if you carry a bat and you get into a fight, you get done for premeditated assault. If you go into the fight and you take the bat off the other bloke and whack him with it, that's self-defence. Yeah? That's how you fight. You don't, you don't go in there with... with with big signs going, this is how we're going to do it to you. You go in there nice and quietly and slowly, 
and you'll get it. And just ask them questions. Ask questions. Mm. Like we got a, we got a letter back this week from the uh, Attorney General's office, and they claimed that the re that the the method used by the Commonwealth to obtain sovereignty over these lands was they took sovereignty when they took radical title. Now they can't claim radical title other than by way of terra nullius, right? Yeah. Now the instrument that destroys their argument on terra nullius is the um, letters patent to the establishment of the state of South Australia. Now the letters patent for this stuff, don't push that. Um, the letters patent for the state of South Australia. You know what letters patent are? Well, when, when the king or the queen says, we're going to go and create a province, what they do is the parliament decides we're going to go and create a province. And the parliament decided they were going to do this, but they said specifically, when, and there was only two things in the letters patent. The king has to sign the letters patent that are written by the parliament, and that gives vice regal authority to whoever is acting under those orders to act on behalf of the king, who is acting on behalf of the parliament. Right? Now, um, for example, if the Governor General doesn't have live letters pattern, he's not a Governor General. Simple as that. Um, in South Australia, the letters pattern to establish South Australia contained two pieces of information. The first was the boundaries of that, that, there, there, Kangaroo Island, and all that there. That's the boundaries of South Australia. The second piece of information was a proviso, is the term they used. And is it subject to the proviso that nothing that the settlers to, did was to interfere with the rights of the, the original native owners in respect of their occupation and enjoyment of their lands. Now occupation of land is pretty easy to understand but enjoyment is a little bit different because in a legal sense, given that this is a parliamentary record, the legal application of the word has to apply. So the, the legal term, um, uh, brain's just gone dead. Recreation. Uh, enjoyment. The legal term enjoyment means to put to any use. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to enjoy my land to the fullest extent, I could build anywhere on my block I wanted to. I could dig a hole anywhere I wanted to. Right? I could put a telegraph pole in the middle if I wanted to. I can do whatever, I can paint a laundry. Whatever I want to do, if I find that enjoyable, I can do that. And that's what the Crown said. You can't interfere with the occupation and the enjoyment by the Aboriginal people, the Aboriginal natives of that land. See? So how is it that... that they then turn around and claim that they took possession of the state. And this term terra nullis, I, I had, um, last year in September, my wife and I were invited to the, um, the Bar Association's annual dinner in Brisbane, and Sir Jared Brennan from the High Court gave the, the, the address there. And um, he raised some interesting perspectives on, on, on law and application and rule of law. And one of the things I couldn't understand was when he said about um, how the, the, uh, the, the government doesn't the rights of Indigenous Peoples Treaty. Now, every, basically every nation other than, than four nations on the planet, I thought, it was, I, thought it was, I thought it was so funny that England signed it. But anyway, everyone signed it except for Australia, Canada, New Zealand and America, I think it was. Um, he said, when he was asked, why didn't Australia sign it? He said, well, our government only wants one system of law in this country. And I said, well, an ancillary question to the initial question as a result of your answer. Um, we've got, correct me if I'm wrong, we've got one system of state, a Commonwealth law, Six systems of state law, two systems of, of territorial law, 839 systems of local government law, and the only law you don't want is a black one? You know, what? Well, I don't understand. You're telling me you only want one system of law. There's that much law in this country, no one knows the law. So you may say that ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, ignorance of the law is an excuse if you don't understand it. Regardless of what a judge... Mate, the judges will make decisions based upon what they are told to do. And judges, and, and this is my own personal mm. position, I believe that, that judges are one of two types of people. They're either someone that someone's got the finger on, or they are good men and women. The good men and women won't last long, and the cases that go through to them will be cases that have no legal impact as a result of any finding. And the cases that are going to concern the government will be given to particular judges who are purchasable quantities that are owned by the state or the commonwealth. It's as simple as that. Mark, yeah? I had an ex uh, a case because I did a cannabis thing and I had one magistrate saying, I will not lock this man up. He, he doesn't have he to refuse to. Yeah, no, no, this is, he refused to because he knew I was genuine and the doctor and all the rest of it. Yeah. He would, but <laughs> others, you get them in, you can see, they just want to bite at the bit, they just want to lock you up. They don't care. 
It's just come in like sheep, lock you up, lock you up. It's business, it's all about money, don't take it personally. That's all it is. Because yeah. all the court is, the, the, see, if you, really, if you really want to get around the system, you really want to jam them with their own rules, what you do is it's a very simple legal process. You know, you've got the, per the, the human and the corporate, right? The, the, the person. What you do is you prepare it, you, you, you draw up a, a statement that's called a security agreement. And under the security agreement, you write up and you say that I, the corporation, give power of attorney and agency to my human. Okay? Then the human answers for the corporate. Right? So you walk up to the court and you go, listen, you want it, Mr. Mr. Mark McMurtry? That's him there, I'm his agent, there's the security agreement, right? But to really scroll, what you do is you use a, a UCC document, that's a UCC Form 1, and you register your agency agreement with the UCC, which is under the Universal Commercial Code, and that's administered across the globe on a commercial basis. Now, if they want to drag you into court on a, on a matter that is under commercial law, then you've got the perfect answer. My corporate self is here, Okay, and I'm the agent for that. What would you like to ask it? Your Honour, would you like to lock me birth certificate up, would you? Because <laughs> that's who they're dealing with. That's what they're dealing with. They're not dealing with the, the human because the government is a corporation. No? And a corporation can only deal by way of contract. Now, if you don't contract with them, you don't get a driver's licence. Okay? You, go, you, you want to get a driver's licence. First thing you do is you go and you apply under your birth certificate with your... Medibank card and your bank card and all the shit that hangs off of that to prove that you're that corporate thing and you go to the RTA and say can I please get one of your licences so I can be bound by your rules and you cactus you're bound by the rules yeah, if you get pulled up on the road and you haven't got a licence what happens to it? what's the alternative to no licence? no licence there is no there is no alternative the, 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 driver's, license, the driver's licence is a, is a certificate that is issued to you that allows you to drive your motor vehicle for a profit Okay? If you're not earning a living, you're not, you're not undertaking a commercial venture, you don't need a driver's licence. Okay? There are guys who go out and do build buildings for a living. They're required to have a builder's licence. But if you build buildings and you're not doing it for a living, you just build your mate's house and did this and help that bloke with that, you're not required to have a builder's licence. If you so as long as there's nothing commercial in any activity that I partake of, that's it. I don't need a licence. No. No. Through which period? That written? Would it help you? Okay. So it's just the way it is. Would it help at all if you filled out a stat deck saying I intend to drive without harming any other... Well, what you do is you fill out a stat deck under international law. And you state in that that you rely on international law. All these, all these documents, I'll put them on a disc and drop a few discs over to next door. Um, and, and what you do is, I... I, I it's a bit funny actually. I um, got pulled over by the police. I had my own number plates in the car. And, and a guy pulled me over and I, I served him on him with stat deck under international law, all signed and witnessed and done properly. And he took it off me and put it on the bottom of the car. <coughs> and when we got to court over this supposedly driving without license and all the rest of it, I said to the, to the magistrate, I said, ma'am, you know, um, first of all, I don't acknowledge the jurisdiction of the court. The only reason I'm here is under the stress and arrest because I know that if I didn't turn up here today, you'd have the blue coat thugs of Queen Elizabeth come around to my house and intimidate and embarrass me publicly. So I'm here today to answer their allegations in respect of A, do they have a right to make the allegation against me? Am I bound by any corporate agreement with the state? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when I, when I started cross-examining this police officer, because the, the prosecutor puts this police officer in, in, in the witness box and, you know, good morning, how are you, fine weather, all that sort of stuff. And my first question, question to him was basically, well, do you remember the day he pulled me over Gat Road knew him and he said yes. I said, well, can you please explain to the court what you, what you meant when you said you're going to get me? And he said, look, the prosecutor said, mate, he can't help you. Okay? You're, you're going to shoot my wife, kill my dog, you're going to shoot me, you're going to rape and pillage my family. What do you mean you're going to get me? Oh, oh, oh so, uh, let's move on. It's on the record that you made the threat, let's move on. Can you tell me what the crown on your arm represents? Oh, it's the Queen. Queen of England, Queen of Australia. Ah, oh, Queen of Australia. There's the Constitution. Can you find the reference to the Queen of Australia? Better still, go straight to the Oath of Oath and Allegiance and find a reference to the Queen of Australia. Now, the Queen of Australia does not exist at law, and the police swear allegiance to the Queen of Australia. So if she doesn't exist, she obviously can't have any authority. If they get their authority from someone who doesn't exist, how much authority do they have? 
It's pretty simple. You know, it's not, it's not, not rocket science. Oh, I'm not a genius. It's, it was just that when I started looking at the law, I looked at the law from the point of view of, okay, fine. They're looking at the law from this point of view of trying to make it stand up. And what they've done is they've built this, the World Trade Center. On the outside, it looks really good, but as soon as you open the door, it's all just matchsticks. And you just go, no, it falls down. You know, because they've got this problem. First of all, the Constitution's utterly invalid. You know, um, if, they, if any, any law that is used, used against you, pursuant to the Constitution, is an act of war against you under Article 51 of the Charter of the United Nations, because the Queen of the Parliament of Great Britain is a power foreign to Australia. The High Court's even admitted that itself. Now, if that's the case, and they're using a law that stems from her Parliament over there, being the Constitution, or a law that stems from that Constitution, then they're using foreign law under the, the auspice of a foreign sovereign, or a purported foreign sovereign, she's not even a sovereign, against us in our lands. Now, Article 51 of the Charter of the United Nations says if someone uses foreign law against you in your native land, that's an act of war. Act, act, of, war. act of war. Act of war. And what I did was I took in two human rights abuse observers from the UN. And I said, ma'am, before, before, just before we go too much further, can you can gentlemen stand up, show your credentials to the court. Ma'am, these are two human rights abuse observers from the UN. You use British law against me, they're going to arrest you. You know? So what happened? Uh, went on for four and a half days. The uh, Governor General sent his barrister up. Um, we had a, uh, a subpoena issued for the Queen to appear. They argued the point that we weren't allowed. No, they argued the point that we weren't allowed to, to subpoena the Queen. I said, well, show me the law. So they pulled out the law and said we weren't allowed to subpoena the Queen of England. I said, well, have a look at the document. It says the Queen of England in her capacity as the purported Queen of Australia. That's the bitch that we want here. Get her ass here. You know? Simple as that. Get the woman's ass here. I want to ask her some questions. She's a public servant. She's not above the law. It's not like she's, she's anyone special. You know, she's just some fat slag taking money off the public. Yeah. And you'd be surprised, I'll, I'll read something to you, and this is what really pissed me off. Like, nothing ever has got me as irate as when I read this in the Constitution. Fucking slag. Um, <laughs> uh, it'll just take me a second to find it. But Salaries of ministers. Now, the Queen is classified as a minister under the Constitution. There shall be payable to the Queen, out of the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the Commonwealth, yeah, for the salaries of the Ministers of State, an annual sum which, until the Parliament otherwise provides, shall not exceed £12,000 a year. And that was 1900. The Queen of England was getting paid £12,000 a year to be a Minister of State for us. So what's she getting now? Yeah. But, you know, all these parliamentarians were... It's pretty clear that parliamentarians can't sit once they swear an oath of allegiance to the Queen of England, yeah? You'll like this. Section 46 of the Constitution, penalty for sitting in disqualified. Now, it states, it states in Section 44.1 that any person who is under any acknowledgement of allegiance, obedience or adherence to a foreign power or is a subject of a citizen or, or, or a citizen or entitled to the rights or privileges of a subject or a citizen of a foreign power shall be incapable of being chosen to sit in the House of the Senate, right? So they're all, they're all incapable of doing so. Until the Parliament provides otherwise, which it never has, any person declared by this Constitution to be incapable of sitting as a Senator or as a member of the House of Representatives shall, for every day on which he sits, so sits, be liable to pay the sum of £100 to any person who sues for him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I like that one. I've got to start the Queensland Parliament, £100 hey, mate, of each. What I've said to you, you don't need to know the law. Pick it up and read it. It's, mate, it's better than a comic. Well, that's when you got this sort of stuff. You look at the acts, which is in theatre, they don't make sense. You know, they don't. statues and acts, they're only in theatre. And you remember, the judge puts on a wig. Yeah. Well, don't you do that in acting in those lovely coats? Hey, There's a whole lot of things. Hey, here's another one. Acts. You put your hand on the Bible and you swear on the Bible. Then they wheel out this other law. Excuse me, this is the law I swore upon. Ah, but you shouldn't swear on the Bible. Says who? Well, in the Bible it says, do not swear your little hairy heads, because this is another no, it says, trick. do not forswear. In other words, do not swear that this is greater than God. There's a difference in what it says. Well, as far as I can comprehend, but the Bible is the key, but here's the catch, like I said before, to the group. Uh, they, through your name, you're, a, you're not a family name, right? They, they get you through trickery, lies and deceit. They break, get you to break God's commandments. If you have a look at it, 
The first three Ten Commandments, do not worship anything, yes you'll worship, do not honour anything, yes you'll honour, do not put anything above me, before me, don't worship the family, so you go in and what do you do? You stand, you bow, you just break in those commandments, so as you break them, we're not a child of God. Yep. Right? And you put it before you, put them on a pedestal. <coughs> the lies and deceit, the whole lot is to trick you and get you bullshit baffles break. While we feed you a whole heap of bullshit, we baffle your brains, we can do whatever you want to. Yeah. Now, That's the basics of it. Here's another one. The Governor General is not the Governor General unless he's, he's sworn in according to yep. the Constitution. Now, for example, John Howard, the current Governor General, John Howard swore in. John Howard, somehow, as the, the, the head officer of the executive government, gave royal prerogative to a man who has nothing to do with the government. Right? How he did that, I don't know, but he did. But the problem they face is this. That when a proposed law passed by both houses of the Parliament is presented to the Governor General for the Queen's assent, he shall declare according to his discretion, but subject to this constitution, that he assents in the Queen's name. Okay? So every law that the Governor General's, and bear in mind I've another document here that states from the Privy Council, the states the last five Governor Generals have not been lawfully appointed, um, and that's direct from the Secretariat of the Privy Council. Um, how is it that the Governor General has not been lawfully appointed? has given royal assent to bills of the parliament which have been used against us, but he was not appointed subject to this constitution. Okay? But he can only gain power subject to this constitution to give royal assent subject to the constitution. But he hasn't been appointed properly. Bullshit. It's all crap. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so how long does it take to understand all of this stuff? I understand. <laughs> Never understand, brother, because you're under someone else's well, system. To copy. Yeah, copy, copy. Oh, I don't know. It's, it, oh, I got it. It's, it's pretty simple. It's not as hard. When you, when you, when you see the, the written information, it's really, really so straightforward. Because I've been doing this now for like 15 odd years, and I've narrowed it down. I've, I've just cut all the shit off and narrowed it down. I've just pared it back to the bones, man. And I can. I'll send over some discs or bring them over the next week or so um, with all the relevant documents. And once you read them and get your head around them, it's nothing special, mate. It's not so basic. Well, you've got to remember these guys are dumbasses. Have a look at John Del Bosco and that thing he's married to. You know what I mean? Or he lives with whatever the situation is. You know? Have a look at the pair of them. They think it's just because they're parliamentarians that, that, that people have to get out of their way. You know, that's the sort of mind, brain dead peanuts we've got around the place. Well, you've got to stop and think. You know, if you think that you're smarter than them, how can they pull the wool over your eyes? And I know for a fact that there's not too many parliamentarians in the parliament of this country that are smarter than I am. And I'm dumb. I'm dumb as bullshit. You know what I mean? And they're not very smart, mate, because they're dumber than I am. The Executive Constitution, Chapter 2, Section 61. The executive power of the Commonwealth is vested in the Queen and is exercisable by the Governor General as the Queen's representative and extends to the execution and maintenance of this Constitution and to the laws of the Commonwealth. That's all well and good if they were lawfully appointed, eh? But they weren't. The Constitution, mate, when, 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 I, when I do the discs, all my documents have got, like the Constitution, I've got all the relevant sections that are important, all highlighted, and so it'll be easy to go straight to them. Um, when a law of a state is inconsistent with the law of the Commonwealth, the latter shall prevail, and the former shall, to the extent that it is inconsistent with the Commonwealth law, be invalid. Right? Now, when they took me to court in respect of licence and all the rest of it, the Commonwealth law says that no company can have a monopoly on trade or services, okay? Any monopoly provisions. That's why Optus was allowed in Australia and Telstra had to take a back seat. So, in New South Wales, we've got this corporation known as the Roads and Traffic Authority. It's a registered company, it's owned by the state, it's therefore open to competition. So, what I did was I started a business and I, I commenced my own motor vehicle registry, and I registered my own vehicles, just the same as the RTA does, they register their own. And I put the plates on the car and started driving. Well, they didn't like that. But the fact is, I can do it. That's according to their law. Right? That's according to their law. But so every pulled up like every second day? Nah, mate, I, got, I, I drove to Sydney and back, and I had a, a copper follow me from, uh, from um, uh, where's the place? Nabiak to Raymond Terrace. You know, you've got the big roundabout at Raymond Terrace? Yeah. And you're, you're going just off to the garage. I pulled in the garage and, and he pulled in behind me and he, and he walked, he looked at the car and I, I said, you're right, mate. I said, I, I will swear this is my car, is it yours? And he said, no, mate. He said, I'm just curious about the number plates. I said, oh, good. Just ignore him. What did, what did the know? number plates have on them? Uh, CMN, 
L A W, common law. Right? Um, and uh, he said, he said, mate, where are those plates from? I said, oh, they're, they're from my plates. <laughs> what was the plate made of? <laughs> oh, mate, steel plates, white yeah. colour bond, white yeah. colour bond plate, yeah. um, with, with all the letters and everything yeah. Yeah. digitally yeah. cut. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, it didn't look too bad, eh? Yeah. And um, he said, mate, is this car registered? I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he said, he said, well, I, I've done a check while I was following you, mate. He said, the vehicle's, that, that registration plate's not recognised and that, that. <laughs> And I, and I just walked, I did this, I walked in the back of the car and I went, yeah, that's my plate, I recognise it. <laughs> you know? And he said, no, he said, no, mate, I'm serious. I said, yes, I'm not. <laughs> and he got on the radio and there was an argument backwards and forwards between him and me and, and him and the station, wherever he, wherever he was talking on the radio. And in the end, he just said, look, mate, I don't know, there's nothing we can do. And then about um, two months after that, they, they, they pulled me up three times in a day and then they arrested me at Woodburn. And um, when they arrested me, um, uh, they took me around to Wood Woodburn Police Station and the cop was, well, because they, they, they tried to drag me out of the car and I just threw my arms and said, hey, hey, piss off. You know? So I'm not protesting what you're doing. This is my hometown. I said, see all these people hanging out the houses here? Because there are four car loads of coppers. I said, see all these people hanging out the houses? I said, they know me. I said, so one hand and I'll sue you for everything you got. <laughs> okay? Now, you want me to get in the back of the paddy wagon? He said, yep. I said, I protest what you're asking me to do, but I'll do it to avoid any conflict. Walked around, got in the back of the van, opened the door, got in. The copper went around to the front of me, the back of my car, and he started to take the plates off, right? And my missus walked out, just kicked, kicked the screwdriver out of his hand. She said, mate, yeah, they, they don't belong to the RTA, and they don't belong to the police. If you, if you steal them, I will have you charged. He said, well, they're unlawful plates. And Rosie said, well, well, until the court decides, you can't make that judgment. You don't have the right to be judge, jury, and executioner at this point in time. So they're staying on the car. He said, well, the car's staying here. Rosie said, where are you taking your husband? He said, at the police station. She said, well, I'm taking the car up. He said, so you drive that and I'll arrest you. She said, well, you better arrest me. Because I'm going to drive. My wife, my wife's saying about this. She's got a mental problem. She's five foot, but she thinks she's about nine foot. You know? And she just, you know, they took me around to the police station. She jumped in the car and drove around parked right in front of the police station. I mean, right in front of the police station. Walked in. They took me and they said, uh, would you like to make a statement? And I said, yeah, <laughs> get me. You know? I don't know why you're doing this to me. You've got no jurisdiction. You've got no authority. You know, and I, I, I used to be fairly confrontational because I was sort of pushing the, the boundaries out, so I knew where I fit. You know what I mean? So when when they come at me hard, I went back home. You know, just to, to keep the fence there. And um, but now I realise there's a better way of doing it. You know, and and the police have been well. We got pulled up uh, about two weeks after, three weeks after the, the matter went down in, in Casino Court. We got pulled up near Woodburn. And the cop would get out of his car and he came up with, to the window and Rosie was drawing. Pardon me. And he said, where's your licence? I said, mate, I said, don't speak to my wife like that, please, mate. He said, I beg your pardon? I said, don't speak to my wife like that, you pig. So he walked around the car. Because, mate, like if he had been polite, I wouldn't open him out, you know. He walked around the car. He said, what's your name? I said, my name's Mark McMurtry, mate. I wish Bush Rosie was here, she too. He took a step back and put his himself and instructed on the letter to speak to you. I said, well, mate, you can't go. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Now, now that's, that's true. I, I know, I've got no reason to say it if it's not true. That, that's, what, that's what happened. You know? How long ago was that? <laughs> that was uh, May 2004. And what's the present situation? Present situation? Since then and on. I refused to get a driver's licence. I refused to register my car. Rosie registers a car simply because of the fact that she drives it more than I do. I, I, just, I just jump in anything and drive it, you know what I mean? Um, I won't drive a car that's not roadworthy. I'm, I'm a reasonable mechanic and I won't drive a car that's not roadworthy. Um, uh, it's just the way I am because as a sovereign, if I'm going to live and pretend that I'm a sovereign, then I have to be as responsible as a sovereign. I have to take into, effect, into account the fact that, that I am responsible for the, the, my actions and the effects of my actions. And, and I have to bear that in mind. I refuse to be intimidated by police. I refuse point blank to be intimidated by police. Um, they have no jurisdiction, and I, and I don't, sort of don't wave that in front of them like a red flag, but I make it clear if they challenge me, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not subject to your jurisdiction. So we can all do that. We can all <coughs> register our cars in your company or a company we make ourselves. Make your own. And you they can't do anything about it. No, but you've just got to know the law. <laughs> I, I, all the years that I've done this, and I, I've been doing it not with Mark, um, I've just come on board with recently with Mark. You can go to court, you can fight in court, 
go bash your head against a brick wall because they're not going to listen. But the way that I think you can figure it out is do the paperwork before you start doing it. Like give it to the government, uh, the attorney generals, let them know exactly you know the law, where you stand, and they're accountable that if any um, unlawful um, officers come up to you. And I think if you do your paperwork and you get your paperwork right, they'll leave you alone. Yeah. And it's also how you ask a question. If you if you walk into court and say, um, I didn't do that, right? it's a statement. But if you walk into the court and you say to the police, isn't it true that I didn't do that? They then have to answer that question. Once they're in the witness box, mate, the witness box is the most powerful thing that we have against them. They had 10 police officers, they had three inspectors, three sergeants and four constables. They were going to put in the witness box in this case in Casino. By the time I finished cross-examining the first constable, they refused to put another police officer in the witness box. <clears throat> right? And I turned around and said to the magistrate, I said, well, you want, if they're not going to call these police officers, I'll call them. Oh, no, no, you can't do that. I said, well, ma'am, there's no property in the witnesses. They don't own the witness. If they're not going to call them, I have the property. They're in the court now. You're on it. I call them nine people. No, 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 you can't do it. So what, what, what are you guys scared of? Are you really that scared I'm going to prove everything that you've done, everything you do is false? You know, why can't I call these people? They have no property in those witnesses. Those pull the police service do not own those witnesses. They might be employees of the police service, Hi. but they're in this court in the capacity of witnesses. They're here now. I want to call them. And they didn't know what to do. <coughs>